Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 5th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Currently, we have a couple of our undergraduate uh, students uh, look at some of our data and play with our honeypots. And one of them, Jesse LaCroix, took a closer look at phishing emails and where the landing pages are hosted. We used, in this case, actually data from a fish tank. And well, what he found is, uh, I think, interesting, even though probably somewhat expected that half of the phishing landing pages are hosted on WordPress. Now, WordPress being, of course, such a popular platform, it's hard to distinguish how many of these WordPress instances are self-hosted versus hosted by some service. But uh, some of the sort of spot checking that uh, Jesse did indicates that most, if not the vast majority of uh, these phishing sites are hosted on self-hosted WordPress instances. And that, of course, has been a huge problem that people set up WordPress. It's relatively easy to get going with it and get a website set up, but then maintaining it is, well, a whole different business. And that's where a lot of people fail. And then, of course, these pages get eventually taken over. Phishing pages are being added to it, often without the main page being disturbed. So the actual owner of the website may not even notice that anything is off. Also, uh, Google Sites are a big contributor here. Uh, that's something that has been popping up. What surprised me was a little bit uh, Google Experience Manager showed up as number three here with uh, 15%. Probably have to look a little bit closer why it uh, shows up with uh, what I consider a fairly high percentage. I think the real lesson here, uh, if you're listening uh, to this podcast, you probably know how to maintain a WordPress. You may actually be able to accomplish that. But if you know any small businesses, if uh, you have relatives or uh, maybe things like uh, churches are such that you're participating in that use WordPress, well, help them out, secure it, and if possible, steer them towards a hosted solution where they do not have to maintain the actual software. Then we got uh, well, an interesting phishing story actually around users of the Trezor uh, crypto wallet. And in this case, it was actually not the fault of Trezor. Well, uh, maybe for the fact that they picked a MailChimp to maintain their mailing lists. MailChimp uh, offers services to companies uh, to basically do mass mailings like newsletters and the like. And turns out that MailChimp was uh, compromised and 319 MailChimp accounts, meaning 319 different organization using uh, MailChimp, were affected in that uh, subscriber or email addresses uh, for their newsletters were leaked. Now, leaking an email address is usually not such a huge deal, but what the attacker realized is that with the Trezor uh, mailing list, they actually had a pretty interesting audience. So what they ended up doing was that they actually sent uh, targeted phishing emails uh, to this group and that phishing email then tried to get those users to install malware with the goal to steal their crypto wallets. Now, apparently the root cause here was leaked API keys uh, leaked by a socially engineered MailChimp employee, but API keys often sometimes uh, leak because they're, for example, carelessly deposited in a GitHub repository. Now, GitHub for a while now has had a feature that allowed you to identify uh, those secrets automatically. Now they have a extension to the feature that will also then deny push requests if, as they say, with high confidence, uh, there are secrets present in the request. Of course, uh, these features aren't necessarily perfect, so uh, still uh, doesn't sort of take the responsibility away from you to actually scan your code for these secrets. And one tool that you may want to use for this is Trufflehawk. Trufflehawk just released in version 3, which is now even even better, even recognizing more key types. They're saying uh, 639 uh, key types are now supported and identified. 
And Trufflehawk works with GitHub, but also supports other repository types and such uh, to search for uh, secrets. And one of uh, the uh, side effects of sanctions against Russia after they started the war in Ukraine was that some certificate authorities either outright revoked Russian certificates or no longer allowed them to be renewed. Chihu360 now did a quick analysis uh, to look at how many Russian certificates uh, are uh, signed by certain authorities outside of Russia. Of course, uh, Russia also started to set up its own certificate authority in response. Well, it uh, turns out that only 0.2% of the 300 and something thousand certificates they looked at were actually issued by a Russian certificate authority. Certificates were identified here by being used for .ru or .su domains. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.